Good morning, fellow programmers. Thanks for joining me. I'm to pay and welcome to Let's Learn C++. Feel free to use the skip ahead feature to jump ahead to any specific sections or examples. Make sure to have annotations turned on so you can see all the updates I make to these videos. Today I'll be using Visual Studio Community Edition, which you can download from visualstudio.com. However, you can follow along with whichever text editor or IDE you like. Today's focus will be on the absolute basics of classes, which builds heavily on previous lessons, so check those out if you're unfamiliar with a topic. If this is your first programming language, I'd strongly recommend checking out my Let's Learn Python series, which teaches you the fundamentals of programming. All you need are the basics and object-oriented programming series linked to the right, and you'll be well prepared for this C++ series. So what is a class? A class is a terrible session of doing nothing but sitting with smelly students and listening to an annoying old person ramble on about meaningless dribble you'll have to pointlessly demonstrate your short-term memory on. Wow, that got dark. But now you know my feelings about our education system. We know from Python, it is a way of packing data and related functions together into a single entity. Instances of classes uh, can be referred to as objects or identities or valid identities. Functions within a class can be referred to as member functions, behaviors, or methods. Variables within a class can be referred to as member variables, characteristics, attributes, or data. Classes are essentially just blueprints for objects. So here we have a very simple example of a class. It's just the keyword class right before the name that we're declaring for the class, in this case it's ham, and then some open and close curly braces followed by a semicolon. Now this is the same with both enums and structs in that you have to have a semicolon following the open and close curly braces. Really, it's pretty much the same as them. Then to create an instance of our class, all we do is call it as a data type of ham, and then name our variable instance of it, which is h. And then we close our program. And now if we just go ahead and test that code out, it'll really quickly just open up the window and close because we did set a breakpoint. But even so, it works just fine. Something to note is that names of classes should always start with the first letter capitalized, as we learned in Python, and which is true in other programming languages. This is the simplest instance of a class that you can create. Note that the program does not care if I create the class inside or outside the main function. All it cares about is that it is within scope. So if I wanted to, I could simply place this class before the main function and it would still work just fine. Doesn't matter as long as it's within scope. I will be referring to variables and functions that belong to a class as member variables and member functions because I think all other names are stupid. <laughs> Let's create a member variable called int x inside of the class and then try to set it. So we're gonna go ahead and go inside the curly braces right there, add a few spaces, and then just type int x and then end it with a semicolon. And then after we've created the instance, we're gonna go ahead and try to access it with the dot accessor, just like we did in Python. Now notice what we get here is a compiling error that says member ham colon colon x is inaccessible. So we don't have access to it. And if we try to run the program, it will in fact not compile. Uh, it says there's build errors, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and cancel out of it. And this is partially incomplete code. It doesn't matter if I like said equal to three, it's still gonna have the same underscore there. So what is the problem that we're seeing right now? The problem we're seeing is a private matter. Har, 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 har. It's a joke you'll get in just a minute. Problem is that we don't have access to the newly created member variable. We can solve this by declaring access specifiers. Classes have three possible access specifiers, which determine what can and cannot access the class's data and functions. Those specifiers are private, public, and protected. These are keywords that we place before chunks of code. We will cover what the keyword protected does in a later tutorial when we discuss inheritance. Classes by default set all member variables or member functions to private, which hides them from outside access. Private variables and functions can only be accessed from within the class and nowhere else. Public means anything can alter the class's data and call functions. We saw with structs that everything is technically public and accessible in every way, much like classes we saw in Python. So how do we do this? How do we make stuff accessible or private? We simply add the keywords of public or private followed by a colon before our members. So I'm gonna go ahead and move our class ham up and out of the 
main function. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a line here to type public colon. And now this variable is public and we no longer have a compiling error here. So if I go ahead and run the code, it'll in fact work just fine. I can set a breakpoint to make sure that everything is working just fine. And indeed it is. Okay. Then below that, I'm going to add a few more variables to show you what else you can do. Now we're going to type private colon and then create an int called y. And then below that, we're going to type public and create an int called z. So now we have variables x and z created that are both public. However, the middle one is private. Y is private. Now, it doesn't make any sense once you actually get the hang of this stuff to actually have multiple instances of public and private. Instead, you would just go ahead and move this line of code up here and then delete that instance and do it like that. That would be much clearer. And if you wanted to do it even better, then you would always create private before you ever declare public stuff. This is the most optimal way to do it. This is kind of like a tradition <laughs> in the programming. You always want to declare your private stuff first and then your public stuff afterwards. At least that was the way I was taught and the way I've seen it everywhere else. <laughs> All right, so now functions. Okay, so we've seen how to create accessible member variables. How do we create member functions? Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and add a function to this class. And what I'm going to type is void ham open close parentheses, and then have just a standard out of ham right there, and then end it with a curly brace. All right, so really simple function. And if we want to access that, and down below in our ins with our instance of ham, we're going to just type h dot print, open close parentheses, and end it with a semicolon, and we are done. And now we should see an output of ham. And indeed, we do see it just fine. Cool. So our function is working correctly. So we have access to functions. We, hit. we access functions and variables of a class the exact same way as Python using the dot accessor, aka the dot separator. Also note that we do not need to include the keyword self as one of our parameters for our functions. This was true in Python, but no longer true in C++. Life is good now. I get to save my hands from five more letters of typing. It's great. Also note that functions can be declared within a class and then defined somewhere else. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and paste some more code in. And here we have our class ham. We're then declaring our function of print, but we're not actually defining it. Instead, we do that down below by stating the return type. And then we use the scope operator to say that from the ham class, we want to define the print function. And note that these must be exactly the same in terms of arguments and return types. Otherwise, it'll give you an error. So if I replace this with int, it'll give us uh, some a compiling error right here saying, hey, this function isn't actually declared inside the class. And then we'd have to actually define this new int print function somewhere else if we called it. So make sure if you're ever running into errors that you have those matching. Otherwise, you'll get some compiling errors like this. After that is just what we'd expect for any function defined as C++. Cool. With all this in mind now, you should generally keep member variables private and member functions public. This will make more sense in time, but for now, just do it as a habit. All right, so what about constructors? In Python, when creating classes, we had an underscore underscore init function for each class called the constructor function. C++ also has this, but rather than having some silly init name, the constructor is instead just a function with the same name as the class. It does not have a return type, however, before it, which is the one thing that separates it from regular functions. So if we wanted to create a constructor here in our class, we could create our own by typing ham, the name of the class, open close parentheses for our arguments or parameters, and then open close curly brackets for the chunk of code we want to execute anytime we construct a new instance of this class ham. You can also have multiple different constructors if you so choose. So if we wanted to, we could create another instance of ham, but this time taking in a variable called int y, and then we could pass that value of y into x, like so. And now we have overloaded our constructor. So it has two different instances or two different ways of calling the constructor of the class, which is very cool. We've overloaded it. And you see, if we mouse over it, it says you have plus three overloads. So any 
code that we place in here is going to be called when we create an instance of our code. Something to note is that alternatively, instead of placing x equals y or x equals the parameter y that we just passed in, we can set this, these values, if they're not gonna be altered in any way, another way. And what we do is right after our parameters or our arguments, we just add another colon and then we declare the variable that we wish to set. In this case, it will be X. And then we create a set of parentheses and within it, we just declare what parameter we are binding it to or what parameter we are setting X with. So in this case, it will be Y. And now we have set X to be the value of Y whenever we create an instance of ham with a parameter of Y. Cool. Something else to note is that you can make a constructor private, which makes it impossible to create an instance of a class. We will cover why this is important and cool in our next series, the intermediate series. All right, so now let's cover pointers and classes. Pointers and classes have an odd interaction. When you create a pointer to an instance of a class, accessing member variables or member functions of a class uses a new and unique operator we have not seen before. The operator is called the member access operator and it allows you to access class members, yay! Instead of the dot, which we have been using before to access members of a instance of that class, instead we're gonna be accessing the the data through the pointer itself. We will be using a hyphen greater than sign, which is like a little arrow. So the pointer is gonna have a little arrow that points to the stuff you're accessing. So the pointer's pointing to stuff. Pretty nerdy, right? <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and see a case of it in action. So up here we have our class ham that we've created before, then we create an instance of it, then we create a pointer that points to instances of ham. And then what we do is we do the way you would think to initially access that data, which is we, we're gonna use our value at operator to get to the regular data. And then we're just gonna use the dot to access the X member variable of it and set it equal to five. Now, after that, we're gonna actually use our proper arrow operator or our member access operator. And that's just, again, a hyphen and a greater than sign. And then the X variable that we're accessing. Notice that it's actually like two less characters that we have to type. It's very cool. And then we can go ahead and manipulate our data any way we want. Cool. So that is it. You have successfully completed the Let's Learn C++ Basics series. Congratulations, excellent work, phenomenal job. Can't say enough good things about it, but you did great. In the intermediate series, I'm gonna be covering a lot more class stuff like destructors, data abstractions, encapsulations, accessors, mutators, virtual, protected, everything. I'm also gonna be covering dynamic memory allocation, templates, lambdas, type def, and so, so, so much more because C++ is a beast to learn and I wanted to break it up for you guys. If you guys would like to help out the show in some way, there's a couple things you can do. If you if you guys want to support me by throwing a little extra cash my way, then you're welcome to contribute on my Patreon page where you can get early access to my tutorials. You can have a private Q&A one-on-one -one with me, um, any number of perks. Or if you want to support the show in other ways, non-financial, another thing you can do is you can support me by tweeting out this series. Grab the playlist link and just share it with your friends or share it with anybody specific you think could benefit from this series be it Twitter Facebook Google Plus whatever your platform or choice is do it all right guys thank you so much for watching great job keeping up definitely try these coding challenges shown here and the debug challenges linked below in the description please leave me a comment below if this helped you at all and also check out the comments if you're running into problems thank you so much for the support and now as always like subscribe and keep the dream alive mm -hmm.